Greetings from London. I hope you're enjoying the first ever virtual beachcombing festival. I'm very excited to share with you some of the most spectacular mudlarking finds from along the River Thames. I really enjoyed meeting many of you at the uh, Nazca uh, Sea Glass Festival last September, and my son and I really enjoyed sharing a lot of our favorite treasures uh, during that conference. During these months of lockdown, I must admit it hasn't been easy, but it has given me a chance to clean a lot of my finds that I haven't been able to clean over the past few months. So I just wanted to share with you a couple of the best things that I've been doing. And uh, you'll see in this photo that uh, I just have a mountain of mudlarking finds that I needed to clean. And fortunately, I've gotten through most of them now, which I'm very happy about. This slide shows us some of the pottery finds that we find from the River Thames. They're colorful pieces. You see faces, birds flying, and a lot of colorful bits of London that share the history. We also find loads of clay pipes, and you can see from this pile of clay pipes, it's taken me absolutely ages to clean all of these, and they range from the 16th century all the way to the early 20th century. I've also learned a new skill during the lockdown, and that's been learning to clean rusty old padlocks and other finds, as you see in this photo, the kind of before and after of the rust and then the clean version of that padlock. I've also been cleaning axe heads, cannonballs, and boat hooks uh, that I've found along the River Thames that I've just never had the chance to actually clean over the past few months. For you beachcombing lovers and sea glass lovers, I've been cleaning some of my historic bottles as well. So this is an 18th century apothecary bottle that I've been able to carefully clean. And this is a 19th century Victorian torpedo bottle and a medicine bottle that I've also found and been able to clean over the last few months here in lockdown. I also love finding glass bottle stoppers, marbles, and many other glass finds along the River Thames. In this part of the presentation, I want to show you uh, just a bit about the history of London and why we find so many amazing artifacts along the River Thames. The city of London was actually started by the Romans back in 43 AD, so almost 2,000 years ago. They started a small settlement along the River Thames. Before that, there was no settlement along the river in the London area. For centuries, the river has been the beating heart of the city, and that's why London even exists, is because of the River Thames, which allowed ships to come in with their cargo, importing, exporting goods from around the world. And as you can imagine, as these large ships are coming into London, they're filled with cargo, and things are being dropped as the cargo is being unloaded and loaded back onto the boats. So the city of London and the port of London was actually the largest port in the world back in the 18th and 19th centuries. And it was importing goods from around the globe on a constant basis. And they say that there were 11 continuous miles of wharves and docks along the River Thames to service all of those big seagoing vessels that were coming into London. So as you can imagine, with all of that activity and busyness along the river, things were constantly being dropped and accidentally lost in the river. So back in the 18th and 19th centuries, small children called mudlarks began combing the beach. And as the tide uh, went out in London, they were able to go down into the mud and scavenge and look for anything that they could resell and make money from. So these were the poorest members of society back then. And there were small children and older women, and this was the only way they could survive, was to mudlark and find anything of value that they could immediately resell. So they were looking not for gold coins or silver objects or other valuable materials, they were looking for very basic things like coal, rope, chains, tools, anything that they could resell to the dock workers along the river or to families to heat their homes, etc. Mudlarks today, like myself, were very interested in history. We love just discovering a bit of history and then going home and finding out more about that bit and object that we find along the River Thames. You can tell from my accent, I'm not a native Londoner. I'm originally from the States, but I've been living in London now for 12 years and mudlarking for eight of those years. And we've absolutely found incredible artifacts along the River Thames over that past eight years. So I just wanted to share with you uh, why we find so many things. And that is because the river in London were quite close 
to the North Sea, to the English Channel. So we're affected greatly by the tides. So in this photo, you can see this is a high tide line in my local area of Chiswick, which is in West London. And this is the low tide line. So you can see the water level has dropped seven meters. So it ranges from about seven to 10 meters that drop every day, twice a day. So we go out beachcombing when the tide is out, when the riverbed is exposed and these lost historical treasures are actually just laying on top. You don't need a metal detector, even though I have one, but you can just go down and walk and find something laying on top because of the boats that are constantly churning up. Uh, things and causing erosion. So in this photo you can see the high tide line in central London and again this is a low tide line and you can see how much of the foreshore is actually being exposed every day twice a day. So I just wanted to share with you I've got a couple of things well quite a few things behind me here at my house and I just wanted to share with you some of the fantastic things that I found over the past eight years. So in this image you can see some of the Roman artifacts and some of the medieval artifacts that I found which include pilgrims badges from medieval pilgrims that were on pilgrimage to various areas around London and even to Jerusalem and came back and dropped their pilgrim badges in the river. You can see belt buckles, you can see thimbles, you can see a medieval knight's knuckle guard, many fascinating things that we find in the River Thames. These are some of the Tudor artifacts that I found and you can see some of the jettons, some of the hammered coins, silver hammered coins, copper coins, dress hooks, dress fasteners, again buckles. You can see a Tudor comb that's made of elephant ivory. In this photo you can see some of the post-medieval dice that I found that are from the 17th century. You can see some of the children's toys like the clock face, the toy dripping pan, some of the trading tokens that were lost in the mid 17th century, as well as many other coins, buttons, knives, cloth seals, and even lead tokens that we find in the River Thames. In this photo, I'm showing some of my Georgian artifacts and you can see which stands out quite distinctly is the gold coin there in the top right corner. I've also found glass bottle seals, wig curlers, a seal matrices, buttons, cufflinks, all types of different kinds of things that the Georgians lost back in the 18th century. From the Victorian times, we find a lot of military buttons, we find market tokens. My favorite thing to find is children's toys, and they're made of lead predominantly and come in all different shapes and sizes, including some of these famous frozen Charlotte dolls that are made of porcelain. Modern artifacts are quite common as well. People continue to drop things into the Thames, and Hindu artifacts are some of the uh, key things that we find from modern times because the Hindus still consider the River Thames to be a sacred river and they still deposit votive offerings into the River Thames. And in this photo, you can see some of the beads that I found, some of the jewelry, the rings, the padlocks, the coins, obviously, and many other fascinating things. We also find a lot of clay pipes, as I've mentioned earlier, and see, these are some of the, the best clay pipes that I've found in the River Thames. Some of them are almost up to 18, 24 inches long, which is obviously very, very long for a smoking pipe to survive for over 300 years in the turbulent tides of the River Thames. We also, as I mentioned previously, find a lot of colorful pottery bits ranging from medieval times all the way up to modern times as well. And each one of these gives us a clue about how people lived and what they enjoyed many, many centuries ago in London. So one thing that I did want to share with you is one of my favorite things to find in the River Thames. And these are garnets, red garnets. They're not native to London. They're actually from probably Sri Lanka, India, from Southeast Asia. And they probably traveled here on ships from the East India Company or from other trading ships that were coming back from the Far East, bringing valuable products back to London back in the 18th and 19th centuries. But for some reason, we find huge clusters of these beautiful, beautiful red garnets in different areas of the foreshore. So there's some areas which are complete hot spots and only the, the, the most uh, veteran mudlarks know where to look for those hot spots, as shown in some of these photos. 
My daughter, fortunately, had a beautiful pendant made for her by Kit Kazati, who saw one of my posts on Instagram and offered to make a beautiful pendant for my daughter for free, which I was very excited about. And what he did is he took about eight garnets of different sizes and put them together in a beautiful pendant and also included one cut garnet as well. And my daughter absolutely treasures this fine. These are some of the interesting rings that were made by Nicolette Parker. Uh, and they were made for Florence Evans, who found the garnets. And you can see the whopping big garnet, which is underneath the rings. It's almost like a cube. And that's the largest garnet that I'm aware that was ever found on the River Thames. And it was found by the three-year-old daughter, Cecilia, of Florence Evans, which is quite astounding that a small girl could find the largest garnet ever. I guess they just have keen eyes because they're short and can get down and spot these things very well. I also wanted to share with you some of the most spectacular uh, pieces of jewelry that have been made with some of these Thames garnets. These were all made by Wendy Meister, who's been working with Thames garnets for several years now and has made exquisite pieces for Mardlarks and other garnet enthusiasts. These are some of the rings that she's made. My favorite is the skull ring where the, uh, the two eyeballs are made with garnets. And these are some of the pendants that she's made. You can see one with turquoise, which I absolutely love. And I especially love the pomegranate pendants with small garnets actually used as a pomegranate seeds. And that's where the word garnet comes from is granite, pomegranate. And that's quite interesting. These are some of the earrings that she's made as well as pendants. And on the bottom right hand image, you can see a trowel with a garnet mounted into it. And obviously we mudlarks on a daily basis use trowels to slowly scrape away the surface and look for garnets and many other artifacts. So this is a very precious artifact for a mudlark is to have a trowel with a garnet inlaid into it. Another thing that we mudlarks love is these clay pipes. And what Wendy has done is she's taken the shape of a clay pipe, made it in silver, and then mounted a garnet within the pipe bowl, which kind of shows the glowing ember of a pipe in use. And I think that's a beautiful interpretation of mudlarking and some of these historical pipes that we find along the River Thames. Two years ago, as I was night larking along the Thames, I found a beautiful, beautiful cut garnet. This is super rare. I only know of two of these that have ever been found. And this one weighs 8.2 carats. And I was able to, again, have this made into a beautiful pendant uh, for my wife for our anniversary last year. And this was made by Ruth Patterson, who again saw my post on Instagram about this garnet and was able to make a beautiful pendant for my wife in Scotland. Another thing that I wanted to share with you today is some of the interesting pieces of jewelry that have been found in the Thames over the past 40 to 50 years by various mudlarks. These mudlarks are all my friends. We have a very tight community here in London. We see each other on the foreshore. And of course, we love showing each other our best finds. On the right hand side are some of the Roman brooches that have been found in the River Thames. The one on the bottom right was found by Jason Davey and it shows a Roman boat from about 100 AD. On the top left hand corner is a slightly older brooch. It's from the Iron Age. So it's about 2,500 years old. Just imagine finding something that old and that beautiful still in the Thames. So we know for thousands of years, people have worn jewelry along the River Thames and accidentally lost that jewelry or purposely sometimes put that in the river as a votive offering to the river gods. In this photo, you can see some of the other Roman brooches that have been found along the River Thames. The one on the left-hand side was found by mudlark Judy Hazel earlier this year, which is astounding that these artifacts are still being found even though they're 2,000 years old. In this photograph on the left-hand side is a Saxon ring, an Anglo-Saxon ring from about 700 AD, which was found back in the 19th century by not a mudlark, but a workman that was working along the river. On the right-hand side are two medieval brooches that are highly decorated that were also found by mudlarks. The one on the bottom right actually shows a scripture verse from Psalms written or inscribed into the surface of the brooch. This is one of my favorite finds that was found by Tony Tira just a few years ago. And this is a piece of Tudor gold that's been immaculately decorated. And you can see in this image so many different types 
of Tudor pieces of gold that have been found in one small area along the River Thames. So you can see in this historical painting, these small gold tubes that were made and sewn into the beautiful garment. And uh, they were used as a, an immaculate decoration to show both the status of the person. So this was worn by a person that was in the royal family or even worn by uh, wealthy aristocrats as well back in Tudor times. So just imagine finding some of these amazing pieces of gold in the river from the 16th century that could have been worn by a king or a queen or somebody within the royal family or a wealthy person at that time period. It's absolutely amazing to think about that. In this photograph, you can see a beautiful gold ring that was found by my friend Mark Beverlow. And I was actually mudlarking with him and he found it not too far from where I was mudlarking. And I was quite uh, mad at him and very jealous that he found this and I didn't. But you can see that uh, there's a heart that's being clasped by two hands. And this was made back in the 17th century as a love token that you would give to the woman uh, that you would fancy or that you liked and wanted to uh, get to know better, let's say. In this photograph, you can see a beautiful uh, brooch that shows William and Mary at the top of it, and it's in a heart shape, and this would have been fixed to a shirt or other type of garment, uh, just to, as decoration and something to ornament uh, your, uh, your clothes. In this photograph, you can see a 17th century mourning ring uh, that was found by Mudlark Ray Love. And it's got a, a picture of a skull on it, beautifully engraved into the outer surface of the ring. And inside, you can see the person's name. Its name was Alex Cheek. And uh, the Museum of London actually found this guy's will. And it dates back to the late 17th century. And they found out lots about this person. And it's always great to find something that reveals a beautiful backstory about the person that once owned that ring or in this case, they were mourning his death back in the 17th century. This is a skeleton ring that was found by Mudlark Mackie Duff a few years ago, and it's got a beautiful skeleton uh, decorated around the whole circumference of the ring. And again, this probably was a mourning ring or what they call a memento mori ring, which was to remember the dead or a lost relative that had died just recently. This is a beautiful 18th century morning ring that was found by my friend uh, Nick Stevens. And again, I was mudlarking with him and he found it and I was very near him, actually walked over the area and I missed seeing it myself. So I was quite bummed about that. But in this photograph, there are some beautiful brooches from Victorian times. The one on the left hand side was found by Christine Fernbank and the one on the right hand side was found by John Higginbotham uh, not too long ago. In this photograph, you see another beautiful brooch, heart-shaped brooch that was found by um, uh, John Higginbotham. Uh, I mistakenly said that that was actually a, a brooch, it's actually a locket, and it had something inside which was very precious to the person that once owned that beautiful locket. This locket was found by Simon Bourne, and it's made of gold and has been beautifully engraved with swirling patterns and flowers and other different kind of floral patterns within this uh, openable locket, again, that had something inside there. I've also found a heart-shaped locket uh, made of uh, red glass, as you see on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, over Christmas, I found a beautiful heart-shaped pendant uh, that was made um, also from like a turquoise or sodalite uh, type of material. Some of the uh, rings that we found along the River Thames are absolutely stunning. You can see in this photo the clockwork orange uh, ring, which is showing the main character from the film, the famous uh, Stanley Kubrick film, and many other different types of rings, some that are uh, uh, set with precious gemstones, others with uh, paste stones that uh, kind of imitate precious gemstones. Tobias Neto found these gorgeous, gorgeous rings, and they're absolutely stunning pieces of, of jewelry. Some of them are very precious engagement rings, wedding rings. Others are just kind of decorative uh, costume jewelry type rings. Uh, and some of the best rings that have ever been found in the Thames, uh, one of them was found by Florence Evans, 
And you can see on the left-hand side here, a beautiful engagement ring that's set with five stunning diamonds. And on the right-hand side is one of my own favorite rings, which I found uh, under a bridge in West London. And it has a heart-shaped uh, stone made of aqua marine gemstone. And that was a favorite gemstone that was used by the sailors to bring them good luck while they were at sea. If you want to find out more about these amazing pieces of jewelry that have been found in the River Thames, you can check out the latest article that I've written for Beachcombing Magazine, which is in the May-June uh, issue of Beachcombing Magazine. Also, the next uh, issue of Beachcombing Magazine, the July-August, is the second part of my article, which is about the, um, the 17th century to modern jewelry that I believe found in the River Thames. Also, if you want to find out more about the general mudlarking finds that we found over the last few decades, you can uh, check out the book that uh, my friend Nick Stevens and I have written. It really is uh, uh, an encyclopedia of all of the amazing finds from the Ice Age up into modern times, all of the incredible artifacts that have been found in the River Thames by mudlarks over the past 50 years. So please check it out. I'm sure you'll love it. And thank you very much, Kirsty, for inviting me to speak. And I hope everyone enjoyed hearing some of the fascinating stories from the River Thames and seeing some of the incredible artifacts that we found uh, in the river. Please stay safe during these unprecedented times. I hope we'll all be out mudlarking and beachcombing very soon. Enjoy the rest of the virtual beachcombing festival.